Hey, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name's Colleen Taylor, and standing with me is WordPress founder, Texas native, Matt Mullenweg. We're here in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. Welcome home. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and you just came off stage uh -huh. from a keynote. You kind of talked about the future of blogging. You said a lot of interesting things. How did it go up there? I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was speaking with Kara, and she's always a delightful person to spar with verbally. <laughs> it's true. It was, it was feisty. The, the Twitters were, <laughs> were lighting up all about it. But I wanted to expand a little bit on something that you talked about on stage and has been a hot topic for a couple weeks here, working from home. Um, okay. Automatic is famously sort of this distributed company. Mm -hmm and everyone knows about Marissa Meyer and the, and the Yahoo edict. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you've built Automatic, what that you know, philosophy is that you have? Sure, well we've been distributed from day one. So literally the first four people at Automatic were in Ireland, Texas, California, and I think Vermont. Um, so, and it just seemed like the natural thing to do because that's how the best open source projects in the world work. I mean, you get the best people wherever they happen to be in the world. So. Uh, from day one, we've done that, and it's now scaled to over 150 people, 130 outside of San Francisco, and we plan to do it until we're thousands of people, and even beyond. And do you think this is something that can work for any company? Do you think that ultimately, I mean, aside from maybe, you know, restaurants, <laughs> I mean, we need waiters and waitresses, but, you know, tech companies, do you think this is something that, that could work for everybody? I think any knowledge company, information company, um, you know, I think whatever it is that you make, you should be there. I mean, if you make cars, be in the factory, yes. But if you make the internet, live on the internet and be natively on the internet. And um, I do think it might be tricky to change a company, like a Yahoo that could be thousands of people already, to switch it to being distributed. But if you're starting something new, I think it's a fantastic way to build a culture of trust and empowerment and freedom. And that will attract the best people in the world, which is what we've been lucky enough to do. Any one killer tool that's your favorite for helping make this distributed workforce work? Any app that you guys use? I'll tell you three. There's three we use a ton. Uh, first is Skype, obviously. That's a lot of one-to-one -one in the text chats. We actually didn't have any meetings in the company until Google Hangout came out. And so Google Hangouts are fantastic for so these group video things, and we find it better than Skype. And then finally, we use uh, actually blog a ton, this theme called P2. It's like, I know you guys use Yammer or Socialcast or something. It's like a, a version of that that you can run yourself, and we just like it a lot better. Okay, P2, cool. And um, I also want to ask on stage, you talked a little bit about advertising and how that is not really the revenue model that WordPress is going after, and you don't see that in your future. You guys are doing subscriptions. Um, is there anything else that you've seen maybe recently that, that could be another magic bullet so that publishers can make money? Selfishly, I'd like to continue to have a job. If it's not going to be advertising, you know, have you seen anything or is there anything out there? What, what do you think is the future here for making money? Well, publishers make money in tons of ways, including events, which you guys have been very successful with. So I think that, A, as a publisher, everything's on your side. I mean, more and more of the... Uh, people are moving online, the dollars are following, advertising is getting better, and you can do things once you build a loyal audience, like events, like products, like Crunchbase, like any of these sort of things that your audience, a loyal audience will follow you wherever you do, and, uh, and do well. For us though, it's just where our passion is, is we don't want to, you know, go to sleep at night worrying about what some ad executive is going to think. Like, I, I really just care about creators, I care about authors, I care about writers, I care about the folks who, um, do that incredibly scary thing, which is sit down in front of that blank screen and fill it. And um, that's always going to be our bread and butter. And I want to talk about creatives in a different way because you're obviously tech guy, but you've also gotten more and more sort of involved in the artistic world. I know that you were a backer of the Bay Lights in San Francisco. Um, I think that a lot of founders that maybe I talk to say I was just so busy heads down building my company I didn't look up until I was like 45 years old and then I decided I needed to get a hobby. How have you kind of maintained this eclectic thing? How, how do you kind of view this? It seems like you're pretty well rounded. It's actually been kind of amazing. I meet a ton of great musicians and artists through WordPress because they're using it as their platform. Um, Childish Gambino, uh, all these folks. Um, so it's enabled me to actually meet some of the people that I'm fans of. And then beyond that, I mean, just arts, I have to do it. Like, it's not even a choice. Like, I'm, yes, very, very busy. The company is growing rapidly. WordPress is adding 
hundreds of thousands of users every week. It's but I you got to do it. I think if you don't, uh, your soul suffers, and then your product will suffer as well. Do you find that you make time to go outside? Do you have to structure it, or is it just kind of this work life? You know, ebbs and flows together. I just try to be open to the opportunity when it naturally comes up. Sounds good. And um, I also want to ask about your your verticals of platforms that that WordPress. It, it's kind of not just this one size fits all blogging platform anymore. You guys have really added a lot of things just recently. Can you talk a bit about that? Sure. So basically, the idea that folks who might own a restaurant or be a musician have a band. Uh, we did one for municipalities because one of our uh, automaticians lived in a town that just like spent like 50 grand on a terrible website. So basically, just showing people what they can do with WordPress, almost like a showcase, but a showcase that you can click on and say, "I want one of these," and then a few clicks, be done. Uh, the, one of the most popular ones so far has been portfolios, which I love as well. So people who want to showcase either their photos or their music or their work or something. Um, Go to wordpress.com slash portfolios and they can have a really good looking one, like one that actually, one that's going to make your friends be like, ooh, how'd you do that? Cool, I'll have to check that out. And I also want to ask about your acquisition strategy because you guys just made a pretty cool acquisition, was it maybe a month ago? Yeah, Simple Notes. Right. And, um, and I know that you had kind of known those guys for a long time. I mean, how do you kind of evaluate startups and teams that come across your radar and, and what's your strategy going forward? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm very active in the startup community, both as an angel investor, I've done over 35 or 40, and also just through Automatic. We talk to a lot of folks who want to partner or things like that. Um, so, I mean, I always have my eye out for that a great team that I think would be highly complimentary. Um, we don't do a ton of them because I think that acquisitions are still difficult. You have to really, really, really believe in the product and want to put the full force of the company behind it. So that's what we're doing with Imperium. It was one of these things where we were looking for our mobile apps, really, need, really needed a better synchronization solution and something that would work online, offline, sort of abstract the data model. And we came across this, these guys who I had known from before, but I didn't know that they had done this new thing, Symperium. And we thought, wow, this is fantastic, but it's three guys. Like, do we want to base all of our apps on this? Maybe if we threw, I mean, we've run lots of internet scale infrastructure at this point. I feel like by putting our name and our force behind it, we can make something that's actually fantastic for mobile app developers around the world. And uh, last question here, you talked on stage about you know a couple blogs that you think are really beautiful on the WordPress platform. I know you mentioned Quartz, which uh -huh. is gorgeous. Um, do you have any favorite blogs that you just read? What are your favorite you know go-to things maybe every morning? Um, I actually love Ohm's blog. I know it used to be with GigaOhm. Ohm.co yep. is um, both beautiful and a daily read. And some of the you know, industry ones like Daring Fireball is always fun. Um, one of my favorites is not a blog yet, but it will be. It's a, a fellow named Dave Pell. He does Next Draft. And it's just a mobile app right now. Um, but he's going to have a blog soon. And he picks 10 things a day. And it's one of those, it's a very nice sort of tour through, you know, because there's so much going on every single day um, that it can be, you can keep up, of course, but I feel like you, you're, the rest of your life would suffer. So <laughs> I love sort of a more curated approach to finding the best stuff out there. Well, Matt Mullenweg, thank you for talking to us. Have fun. Thanks. <laughs>